Good afternoon. I am Raymond Sim, Portfolio Counselor at UOB Private Bank. Today, I'm very pleased to have Dana Jay, Portfolio Manager of the Fidelity Sustainable Asia Equity Strategy. Dana Jay is going to give us insights into the Asia's sustainability journey and the growth opportunities that the region offers. So without further ado, Dana Jay, let's start with discussing how is the Fidelity Sustainable Asia Equity Strategy different from the traditional Asia X Japan Equity Strategy. Hi, Raymond. Thanks for having me. The Fidelity Sustainable Asia Equity Strategy is about holding sustainability as an integral part of the investment approach. We seek to identify high-quality growth companies in Asia to achieve long-term capital growth. And I think this approach brings two distinct benefits. I think firstly is an appreciation of the true long-term potential of an investment, i.e. identifying long-term compounders. And secondly, it's about mitigating risks by carefully managing exposures to companies that are compromising long-term returns for often short-term gain and hence taking on significant risks. And an ESG approach helps us avoid such companies. To your question, the strategy is also different from traditional strategies in that we have an important dual objective. We want to run this strategy on core sustainability principles and high standards, and we also want to generate alpha or returns for our clients. We do not want to compromise one for the other. And as you can imagine, Raymond, this is no easy task. But given our internal bottom-up fundamental research and our proprietary reading system, we believe we have all the tools necessary to pursue these dual objectives. A core pillar of our investment approach is also a focus on engagement with our investee companies so as for us to be a catalyst for positive change. This is something that helps us drive higher value in our companies that we call as improvers. And these are companies which are not quite there yet in terms of high ESG credentials, but have a clear potential to improve and hence drive long-term value. For my next question, are there any particular sectors which the strategy avoids investing in? Our approach to sustainable investing stems from two pillars, two key pillars. Integration, which is where we integrate our proprietary ESG ratings into our investment and research process, and engagement, where we seek to positively influence corporate behavior so as to add value to companies and indirectly to the wider society. So while we do have some core exclusions around sectors such as tobacco and coal, we favor engagement over exclusion with companies and other sectors. Company engagement is critical because it gives us insights and it allows us to influence behaviors. And we see ourselves as partners of companies that are committed to driving sustainability and long-term returns. One important thing to note, though, is that we seek to be partners of companies which are genuinely making a transition. For example, while we generally don't invest in thermal utilities, these are coal-fired utilities, where we find such a company that is making a genuine transition towards renewable energy, we will be willing to work with this company and support such a transition. And finally, we also have a divestment policy where if a company does not improve on the key parameters that we've set for them through our engagement on a certain time frame, we will look to sell out of such an holding. Can ESG analysis potentially enhance investment returns? And why is Fidelity well positioned in this regard? As mentioned earlier, we manage the Fidelity Sustainable Asia strategy based on a dual objective. So not only do we want to invest sustainably, we also want to generate a return. So on this principle, we would not own a stock just for its ESG merits if the projected returns don't make sense. For example, if a whole ESG thematic is widely overvalued, we would stay away from it because it contravenes with our other dual objective, which is to generate returns. So our strategy is actually a blend of at least 70% in highly validated, high quality ESG rated issuers but up to 30% of the portfolio is then dedicated towards what we call as ESG improvers. These are companies where we seek to drive their ESG improvement while capturing the value that gets created as a result of that journey. So through carefully managing risks and seeking sustainable compounders, we think that such a strategy can be rewarding for long-term investors. You know, at Fidelity, we have a strong and experienced research and investment team covering the significant breadth and depth across the region. We carry out in-depth ESG analysis, engagement, and then also leverage our voting strategy to evaluate, monitor, and influence our investee company's progress on the ESG front. So when you combine our understanding of businesses along with bottom-up ESG research, 
we think we have a robust and more importantly, a forward-looking analysis of the ESG processes of any company. What are the key risks or challenges for this strategy? Undeniably, Raymond, there will be challenges when you're investing in such a new area such as ESG. And the challenge in Asia is actually around very different ESG reporting standards across different markets. And in some cases, these reporting standards are not even mandatory in some of the countries. Having said that, the region still presents rich opportunities to pick long-term ESG winners. Uh, and through engagement, we believe even for companies which are classified as improver companies, uh, we can drive a meaningful upside by understanding these companies through our own proprietary analysis and through engagement. And you will see that there are many companies which have a low sustainability rating, especially when you look at it through the third-party rating provider lens. But this is where we see an opportunity to engage with the company to help drive that ESG improvement. You know, these are companies which over time can drive significant delta in your portfolio and help you capture the value addition that comes when a business transitions towards an improvement in disclosures, processes, and generally a much stronger alignment with ESG metrics. As more investors get on board the sustainability trend, do you see bubbles forming in some sectors? And how will your approach make a difference? Yes, I mean, history has shown us that wherever there is a new concept or a new trend, there are very likely to be bubbles. And I would say that in some of the kind of ESG-related sectors, there are probably bubbles which have already formed, but we are very mindful of valuations. As we discussed some time ago, you know, we have a dual objective, so we cannot compromise that return objective just because there is a very hot ESG thematic present in the market at the moment. We have heard so much from you on sustainable investing opportunities in Asia. Do you have any final thoughts for our investors? I believe ESG investing in Asia is an emerging and very exciting space. And actually, we appear to be at a very early stage of driving good long-term returns by adopting a sustainable investing strategy. And that's exactly what we are doing in the Fidelity Sustainable Asia strategy. We are leveraging our bottom-up research capabilities and strong engagement with companies to pursue our objectives of delivering investment returns for our clients, but also doing it with a sustainability-centered approach. Thank you, Dhananji, for your time and insights. Thank you, Raymond. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you all for joining us, and we hope you gain key insights from our sharing today. Potential investors should read the prospectus before investing in the fund. The value of the units in the fund and the income accruing to them, if any, may fall or rise.